So the New York Giants went out and they decided to sign Logan Ryan. Finally, Logan Ryan off the board. Crazy it took him so long to get uh, signed. Uh, he ends up getting signed for a very reasonable deal for the Giants where it looks like it's uh, uh, about a $5 million deal, which is very, you know, you'll take that absolutely if you're the Giants. I mean, I think you could easily make the argument he was worth around $10 million. Probably the reason why it took him so long to get signed was because teams just aren't really that interested in a nickel corner. Uh, but I think he's a really good nickel corner. He's an elite nickel corner, and I think that still has a ton of value. So I love this move from New York's perspective. If they were willing to give James Bradbury $14.5 million a year, and listen, I love Bradbury. I think that's a great signing as well. Uh, but I think Logan Ryan is easily worth a third of that, no doubt about it. Just a great move on both sides. Uh, signings by the Giants, and let's just get into what I like so much about Logan Ryan. This play's a great play, and a great example of what he can do. It's going to be a cover two zone, uh, and this is the way this play is going to work for the Colts, is they're going to basically run play action to the top of the screen. They want to get Tennessee players to the top of the screen, specifically the player who's covering the middle of the field. That's the main guy they're trying to get to move over, because they're going to then have three Indianapolis players be running towards the bottom of the screen, and of course, there's only going to be two Tennessee players who are in the area who can make the play. Unless the Tennessee player doesn't get fooled by the play action or a safety crashes in, which that seems like it would never happen. So basically, unless someone uh, does a great job of reading that it's going to be play action, this is probably going to end up being a good play for Indianapolis. And once the ball is snapped, you notice that no one, you know, the play action works. So basically, Logan Ryan, uh, who is the one in the circle, uh, there's two Indianapolis players who are in his area. Now, the one critique I do have to give is that if you're the Colts, you want to be more spread out than this. You don't want to be this close to each other. You want to get a bit more spread out uh, because that way Logan Ryan would really have to make a decision. Now Logan Ryan is doing his best to not make a decision. And so that's certainly a mistake by the Colts to some degree. But also look at what Ryan is doing. And I love what he's doing here where he's looking up at the quarterback. This is what you're supposed to do in zone. But it's a lot easier said than done. But it's especially important when you have two guys in your zone. Because he can look up at the quarterback, read what's going to happen, realize it's going to be towards the middle of the field. And he's going to go in that direction. Whereas I think a lot of guys on this play uh, m might just try to take away the player who is closest to their own zone, but clearly that wouldn't work because there's a wide open gap over the middle. Ryan reads this play, he leaps up, knocks the ball away, nearly gets intercepted. Just a tremendous play by Ryan. That's another thing he can do really well as well is move to the side and, you know, uh, his ball skills when moving to the side are just tremendous, which again, that's great for a slot corner because you might be ending up playing the middle of the field in zone coverage a decent amount and he could absolutely thrive in that area. But I also want to be clear, you know, sometimes people are slot corners because they're just not good enough to be a straight up corner, a one or two corner, so they become the slot corner, so they don't get burned deep. That is not the case with Ryan. He is a guy who can he can win battles to the outside as well. Like, take a look at this play. Uh, he's going up one-on-one -on -one against T.Y. Hilton, one of the better players in the game. Uh, it's man coverage, and he's going to be faking as though he's running towards the middle, but then he's going to cut to the outside. Uh, you know, Ryan thinks, okay, I'm a slot corner. I can probably get away with this. But then Hilton cuts to the outside and tries to gain yards. And at first, this play is working out well for Indianapolis. I mean, it looks like it's working out well for Tennessee, but that's because it's not actually going to be a play to the top of the screen or to the middle of the field. So while Ryan is doing a good job of keeping pace with Hilton, now all Hilton has to do is cut towards the outside, and he could potentially get open. And you would expect that he would, since Ryan is using a lot of his energy just trying to get up to the middle of the field. Hilton cuts, but Ryan is able to stay right with him and even leaps in front to get the interception. Could have been a bit of a better throw, but that was never going to be a, a completion. And it looks like there is a little bit of contact, but there's actually a lot less than it looks like on this angle. There's hardly any contact, and most of it was initiated by Hilton, so definitely not a penalty on that one. Just really a, a great play by Logan Ryan. He can do every aspect of that nickel corner so tremendously well, like, uh, take a look at this one where it's going to be uh, a running play. So you might be thinking, wait a second, it's a running play. Who cares? But nickel corners actually do need to be uh, somewhat valuable in the running game. I mean, it's kind of almost there's a similar style to a nickel corner and a strong safety. Obviously, it's not the same, but sometimes your nickel corner is going to have to come into the running game. And Ryan is someone who can tackle and can make plays very well. It's specifically with his reads, so you might notice that no one on this screen is wearing number 26. 
That is because Logan Ryan is not on the screen right now. He's actually just off the screen to the left. But watch how right when this play starts, he quickly runs in. He's on the left side of the screen now, and he's running way quicker than the receiver who's in charge of blocking him. So the receiver has no chance. And this is just all Ryan making a quick read and getting over there. So again, you might think, well, maybe he'll get fooled by this and it'll allow other players to get open. He doesn't really get fooled by this. He's very good at being disciplined. He doesn't get fooled, but he also picks his spots to run in. Uh, and then when he does finish this play, he's going to be able to make a very quick tackle again. He can do all S aspects of that nickel corner roll very well. I want to touch on one thing I talked about a little bit earlier, his sort of lateral movement, especially in zone coverage, because I think this is a great example of showing it, where it's going to be a cover two zone. There is a receiver running that's going to be past uh, Ryan's zone and going to try to get into certain gaps in coverage depending on when Mahomes decides to make this throw and right when the ball is snapped you notice that okay there is a receiver who is in a gap in coverage right here Ryan is the other one in that yellow box uh, there's a window here and Mahomes ran out to the bottom of the screen so he actually has a better angle than he would have had he stayed in the pocket but again Ryan is able to leap over and he's able to knock that ball away uh, and that just kind of goes to show what he can do. Even against the best quarterback in the game, he can still find ways to come over and knock that ball away. Uh, it just I think that it goes to show how impactful he is in the nickel corner position. I really find it crazy that he didn't get signed earlier. I find it crazy that when he did get signed, he got signed for so little. I can't imagine nobody. I, I really I don't I can't believe no one's offered him a nine million dollar contract. It makes zero sense to me because I think he's really good. Uh, but you know, is he perfect? No, not necessarily. He has given up some bad plays. In fact, he gave up five touchdowns last year, which is definitely on the high side. This one was one of them, and it'll be a good example of showing what can go wrong, uh, sometimes for Ryan. Um, this is going to be man coverage, cover one play. So he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup. So this is the, uh, you know, the kind of thing, you know, nickel corner, usually covering the guy in the slot, uh, in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, covering your third receiver. That's why he's out there. One of the real struggles he can have sometimes is that he can get his back turned relatively easy. Like, watch how right when this play starts, his back is turned right here. He's struggling to keep up with a speedy receiver. And this is really the way that Ryan can get beat. It's with speed. When he's going up against one of the faster receivers, he gets his back turned very quickly. And why is that a problem? Well, because if you're not looking at the ball, you can't make a play on the ball. And so watch how, even though there's not a ton of separation, Mahomes is able to make this throw and the receiver is able to make the grab. And then also, he just does a great job of, you know, splitting two Tennessee defenders, getting into the end zone, getting a touchdown. Good play by him. Uh, so you can't put all of it on Ryan. Uh, but it just that's just kind of one example of many I could find of, of how that is kind of a problem. But at the same time, when you're playing nickel, really, that doesn't happen too often. There will be this occasional play. You know, he's not the kind of guy you really want to leave on an island in the red zone. But it also seems pretty clear that the Giants have no intention of leaving him on the island in the red zone. Uh, they have, uh, of course, James Bradbury, who, as I said before, a uh, big fan of. Uh, and, you know, they also have DeAndre Baker, who was a rookie last year. Wasn't great, but, you know, sometimes uh, corners have rough rookie seasons, but turn it around year two. Uh, hopefully that happens uh, for them. Because if it does, I mean, that's a pretty elite one, two, three punch. If Baker can just be a solid number two guy, I mean, with, with Bradbury, Baker, and Ryan, that's that's going to be tough to pass against. So I love this move. I think it's great. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.